All right, so welcome to Getting Started with RPR. My name is Joe Teeter and I will be your instructor today. If you guys have any questions at all throughout the webinar, please feel free to go down into the question box, type in your question, and I will make sure that we get this, um, I get those answered. All right, we got a question. Uh, no, actually, this is the same as October 13th, so it's a beginning session. Uh, it's always nice to hear it again if you were on the October 13th, uh, but it's basically the same class. Different instructor, uh, so you may get a little more information uh, this time uh, than last time. Sometimes it's good to repeat, so I uh, hope you will stick around with us. All right, so let's go ahead and get going. Uh, again, if you want to text RPR agent with no space between RPR and agent to 555-888, you will get a message back with some sample RPR reports. Uh, so if you haven't had a chance to really look at all the reports that we have in RPR, this is a great way to kind of sample the reports and see what's available in there. So again, RPR agent to 555-888. I will have this slide again at the end of the class. So we're going to talk about what is RPR. We're going to show you how to use RPR with buyers and sellers. We'll go through a couple scenarios. I'm going to show you how to create reports, a little bit about those. Homepage navigation, everything that you have available to you on the homepage. Uh, if you have not already created your RPR account, I am going to go through the steps on that. It's pretty easy, but I'm going to take you through that. And then at the end, I'm going to show you how to up, uh, customize, update your profile. And then at the end, I'm going to show you where you can get help. So we have a lot of tutorials, a lot of video on demand, uh, other webinars that you can uh, certainly join and watch like you're doing today. So what is RPR? RPR is NAR's technology company. Uh, it is a national repository of parcel-centric property information. We have over 166 million U.S. properties in our database. The base of the database is public records, and then RPR layers over the top of that about 350 or more different additional data sets on top of that. So things like the mortgage information, tax records, uh, school attendance zones, scores, plat maps, distressed information, walkability score, just to name a few. It is available only to realtors. No consumer has access to this information. The only way the consumer would get information uh, from RPR is by a report that you would send, uh, create, and send out to them. All realtors have access regardless of whether the MLS has partnered with RPR and it is included in your yearly NAR member dues at no extra cost at all. And this is really created to give you guys all of the data that you need on any property and really to reinforce you as the local market expert. We're not an MLS. This is how we get your information. It's streamed from your MLS into RPR. We're not a consumer-faced business model or a listing syndicator, redistributor. Anything that we get from your MLS stays strictly in RPR and does not go anywhere else. Again, it's not available to any, anyone other than a member of the National Association of Realtors. Some of the ways that you can use RPR, you can use it to research property details and also additional information such as notice of defaults, mortgage information, uh, tax information, school attendance zones. Uh, so the property can be either on the market or off the market. Uh, you can use it to determine the best price for a property using the comp analysis uh, and the home improvement tools that we have available for you. Uh, it's a great way to use it to farm new areas uh, or you can even uh, prospect for maybe bank owned properties if that's uh, your specialty. It's also a great way to impress new and returning clients with your RPR customized uh, reports. A uh, great way to stand out a listing presentation, buyer's tour, open house by having our reports uh, there with you. All right, there are two terms you're going to see in here, AVM and RVM. An AVM is an automated valuation model. So it's an estimate that's used, only, that's calculated using only the public available information. The RVM, which is the Realtor's Valuation Model, is taking that same public information, but we add in on top of that all of the MLS active, sold, and off-market data. So it's combining the two databases together, which gives it a higher accuracy than any other valuation product out there on the market. So let's go ahead and get into 
uh, the program here. All right, so here we are in RPR here. All right, and I have lost my mouse. There we go. All right, so here we up at the top. Welcome your name. Here's where you can access commercial information. We're right now we're on the home tab, but we're going into the results, details, and reports. The number right below that just shows how many reports I've generated today. And then you've got your settings over here. And then here's where all of you are going to be doing all of your research. So here's all of your saved. Anytime you saved a property, a search, a neighborhood, a custom area, or even your market activity, this is where all of that is going to be. And then you can look for properties that are on or off the market. You can look for properties that are sale and pending. Look for properties that are for lease. You can look at, uh, look at neighborhoods, schools, and then also do market activity. Here's a little thumbnail information of where you've been. You can go back and revisit any one of those reports, searches, or properties. Here's information about the RPR mobile. So if you haven't already done so, go to the App Store or Google Play Store, download the RPR mobile app, and then you have access to all this information on either your phone or your tablet. Down at the bottom are all of our resources here. So you can go to our blog where you can sign up for more webinars. You can also uh, go into the resources and, and get information there. Facebook. Learning will take you into our video tutorials. Uh, support will take you into our knowledge base articles. Uh, you do have the help button over here on the left hand side. If I want to know how to uh, do a CMA, just type in, hit the little search button, and it will pop up and give you some articles on how to do a CMA or click view more to view more articles. You can also come down here and click on contact us and give us information on what you're needing and some will be contacting you to help you out with your problem. Also on the right hand side down at the bottom of every page on the desktop, you do have our toll free number here. They're there 24 seven. They're located in Omaha, Nebraska. They do speak English and Spanish, but they're there seven days a week, 24 hours a day. You can also do a live chat with them too if you want some immediate help. Up at the top here, let's go into the gear. So once you have your account set up, one of the first things you want to do is come over here and upload your photo because that's what's going to show up on your cover page. And then make sure that you've got your company logo or your team logo in here or uh, your office logo uh, can also be in there. You can also add more of your contact information in here. And then down here of your home areas. So you could go ahead and add in uh, any home area that you'd like, even down to the zip code. I'll just go ahead and put in the helo here. And then I can look at um, this information from that uh, first page. I'll show you that in a minute here. Uh, if you have your mobile access, you will have that information in here. If you have access to zip forms, you'll just link the two there where mine says unlink. And then make sure you come up here and hit save and that will save all of your information. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my home page. All right, so under the saved over here, if you come down, scroll down a little ways, here is all the market activity from my home areas. This is where you'll put in up to 10 of those places that you could put in there. And then when I click on Hilo, for instance, it's gonna show me my filters over here. Again, you can change any of that information, the property type. Uh, so if I don't want co-ops in there, just the other two, uh, I can make any changes and then hit apply and it will readjust. It also will show it on the map as well. All right, let's go back home. All right, so let's go to all properties. I was just in contact with a homeowner and they want me to come over and talk to them about the property and see if we can get it on the um, market here. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in the address and then I'm gonna come over here and click search. So again, any property that's on or off the market, you can do this from that all properties tab. So you can see here's the address. Here is showing off market. It shows the sold date, the date that it was sold, and this is coming from public records. Here is the RVM. Anytime you see the little information bubble, you're gonna get a definition here. And then right below that is the view details. So when you click on the view details, it's going to give you a little information about where your property is located, and then all of the comps that were used to generate that RVM. So a little thumbnail here. So the RVM of 435, 540, and then these were the properties that were used to generate that number. 
You're going to have full control when we get into that CMA on which properties you do want to use and which ones you don't want to use when you actually get down to doing your CMA and finding out what the true value is. I'm going to go ahead and hit the X. Right below that are the basic facts. Again, there's a little information bubble. Talks who the owner is. To the right of that, you've got the range of property values in the area, the confidence score. This talks about what the confidence score means, and there's a little video down here that you can uh, look at. It shows the change over the last month and the change over the last 12 months, the last time it was sold, the price, and the date. To the right of that, if you have zip forms, you can uh, click on that. It'll take you right into your zip form account. Here's property analysis for investors, which will take you into doing an analysis for either a long-term hold or a flip. Right below that are all of your pictures. So right now we're on the street view. This is the Google street view. Google, Google doesn't always get it right, but you have access to that. And then you also have the overhead view too. If it's been listed multiple times uh, in here, uh, you will also see other photos down here, historical photos that you can scroll through and look at. There's also a place for notes. And I like to, when I preview properties, I like to put in notes for myself so that when I, instead of writing it on a piece of paper, I write it in here and then I know it's always a place where I can find it. So let's say a uh, homeowner, um, home, okay, I can't type today. Homeowner stated they had a minor leak in the kitchen. Okay, fixed. June of 2017, no damage, all right? Again, it's just a place to put the notes or anytime I've either observed something or the homeowner has told me something. Now, right above that, it shows that that check mark is in there and that means that's gonna be included in my reports. Well, those kind of things I don't want included in my report, so I'm gonna come up here and uncheck that box. Then anything that I put in this box is not going to be included in any report that I send out on this property. Right below that is upload photos. Very easy to upload a photo. So again, this is not um, a good picture to put on the cover page. So if you drive by, you can always click on browse for file, go into where your files are. Obviously, this is not the right picture, but I just want to show you how easy it is to do that. Just click on the photo that you want, click open and it's going to upload that photo right into the account, into your account. Everybody has their own account, so whatever I do in here, if you guys would pull up the same property, you're not going to see anything that I have done in here. It's just strictly in your own account. You come over here and click on Edit, and click Use for Report Cover, and then this is the photo that would be used for that report cover. And then hit Save. Uh, I'm not going to do that because that's really not the... Uh, right photo but I want to show you how easy it was and then you have the seller's proceeds that you can go ahead and fill out so if you wanted to you know if they're going to get 340 for this property or maybe 350 you could start putting in this information maybe their first loan is only 125,000 so you can see as I start filling this out their cash to seller net cash to seller starts populating down here but you will have to do this for each property Come down and hit save and print or just hit save and close and then you can include that in your report. Here's the homeowner's facts coming from public records and then here's the home facts. Uh, anything that you want to change, you can certainly come over here and make any changes. So if you know the homeowner said, I actually have five bedrooms instead of four, which the public records has. So you're welcome to make any changes. Just make sure you hit save down here. Add a new row. This is where you can start building your uh, list yourself. So let's say this is waterfront property. And then all you have to do is hit add. And as you do that, you know, maybe it's got uh, 125 feet of shoreline or whatever the case may be. So again, you can put in whatever information that you need. But as you start adding, uh, it will start populating this list down here. And then if there's something on the list that you want to add, like fireplace, you could do that and put maybe one unique stone front. And again, just hit save and you've saved that information. So you can add as much as you want as you get to know the property. The other thing I want to point out here is the edit custom facts. Click on that 
it's going to show you your custom list that you've been adding to there. Right now, I only have HVAC in there. I've added it to 21 properties. If I hit the delete here, it's going to delete it from all 21 of my properties. If I only want to delete it from this property, then I would just hit cancel. And if I had this in here like this, here's the HVAC. All I have to do is come over here to this little trash can at the end and delete it that way from this property only. Another place for notes. Here's the median estimated home value. You can uncheck whatever you don't want to see. You can hover over and get the values, what they were at that point. Here's all your interior details coming from public records, your location details, even the walkability score. You've got school information. The left side is coming from the listing data. The right side is based on the location of the property coming from Maponix and greatschools.net is the link to the school information. Here's the home energy consumption. If it's available, you'll see a chart in here. If it's not available, you will get this, uh, this message. Here's the legal description. Here's a plat map that you can download. And then you got your tax information and the deed records. On the right hand side, going back up, you've got schools that are nearby. You can go to next to look at next, but each one's a link to go in and look at the information, which is the, uh, the scores and the reviews. Here's the information about the neighborhood. Again, you can click on the about, the source, and how often it's updated. Uh, right above that, if this property had been listed multiple times, you would see right in here under heat maps, uh, compare historical records. Uh, this one doesn't have any, but you might see that in here, and that's a nice uh, tool that you can also uh, look at. Here's the map. I'm going to go ahead and click on the bigger map. It shows my map here. I can click on any one of these properties and go in and take a look at the little thumbnail information, or I can click on more details and go in and look at that. I can also move the map around, and if I find other properties that are available here, like this one uh, was recently sold, so whatever status it's in, you're also gonna see that information. All right, here's your legend right below that. You also have heat maps. So one of the things I like to take a look at is the 12 inch change in estimated value. And you can see the scale right down here and then it shows where your property is located and then what is happening in that 12 month. Anything that's got the dark blue is going up about 20%. Anything that has that dark red is going down about 15%. There is an echo difficult to hear you. Uh, I don't know if everybody else is still having, is everybody else having an echo uh, problem as well. Okay, um, maybe turn down your volume and see if maybe that is, it doesn't look like anybody else is having an echo problem. It might be your hear earphones that you're maybe you're using. I'm not really sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and continue. Thank you. All right, so here's the 12 month change. And again, there's other um, heat maps that you can also select. Another one I like to look at is flood zones. I'm in uh, Arizona, so that's one. Here's a concentration of distressed properties. Here's the listing price to sales price. So you can click on any one of those and find out a little bit more about your area so that you can talk to your homeowner and have some knowledge about what's going on in the market. I'm going to go ahead and come back up here and hit None and go to Smaller Map. The next one over is the History tab. The history tab is going to give you uh, a story. So it's going to tell you what's been happening with this property. So here there's a distressed action. So I'm going to go ahead and hover over that. They received a notice of default back on 11-1-2013. There's a little house here on 11-1-2013. It was sold for $261,429. And then again sold uh, in 2014 for $345. So here's your key up above, but you can hover any over anything that's on that map and you're going to get the value. Another place for notes. Here's your prior sales transactions. We're looking at public notes. You can also go and look at the listing if there's any there. So you can just toggle back and forth. Here's what the sales price was. Here's the loan amount. Whenever you see show more, that just means that there's more information underneath. Here's your tax assessment information. Anytime you see next, you just have more information underneath. Okay. And then here's the mortgage records. 
and the distressed information. Again, going back up, you've got the schools about the neighborhood and then also the historical, uh, compare historical is also in here too. The next one over is the charts and the charts is gonna paint a vivid picture about uh, this particular area. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time here because I have a lot to go through, but it gives you a uh, definition, a source and how often it's updated. You can hover over, get the data. All of these are basically updated on a monthly basis, except for inventory. Listing inventory is updated daily, and so is distressed properties updated on a daily basis. Let's go over to the refined value. So this is where the reality check comes into play. Okay, um, Jonathan, let me come back to that, okay? Um, You'll need to call our help desk uh, to help with that. That's the quickest way, uh, but we'll get into that here at the end. All right, so here is adjusting the basic facts. So if you know that something is not right, uh, you can go in and make any changes. Let's say they added a fifth bedroom here. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in the fifth, hit apply changes. You can see that it did add some value to that house. So now I'm up to 467. Uh, you can go ahead and hit restore original. If they change living square footage, that will also add. Sometimes adding a second story may not add value. It just depends on the area. I'm going to go ahead and collapse that so you can still see this is our RBM. So the next one is based on home improvements. So the homeowner has told me what they have done with the property since they bought it. Let's say the first thing they did was maybe added uh, attic insulation. It's going to give you a definition. So all you have to do now is put in when they did it approximately, hopefully they remember, and the, the date and the year, and then approximately what the cost was. So let's say they spent $1,400 doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and click add, and you can see now that the value actually went up because they added it uh, back in 2016, spent $1,400. Their now return is 1931, which is a pretty good deal. Uh, so you can see here how it changed my refined value here. This is all coming from Hanley Wood. Hanley Wood is a leading aggregator of home improvement. They put out a remodeling magazine and they've loaded all of their data into here. So based on the location in the country um, and Hawaii, this is what is telling you that based on the uh, cost, or, uh, cost of materials, the cost of labor, uh, it's now worth that much. So again, I would just come down here and select what else they did and complete it and their cost. If there's something that they have done that's not on this list, just come down to other. And then you're gonna type in, let's say they uh, landscaped and added a pond, okay? Put in the date they did it. Let's say they did this in August of 2015. And let's say they spent $3,000 doing that. Now, Hanley Wood doesn't know, know what other means. So because they did this back in 2015, the cost is now 2,700, so it's being prorated out over a 20 year time period because it was done back in 2015. Had they done it in 2017, they would get that full $3,000 for that. So you might wanna be careful if they do it this year, you know, it may not be worth uh, the $3,000, so you might want to be careful on whether you add that or not. I'm going to go ahead and collapse that. Now it's based on needed improvements. I wish I'd had this a couple years ago when I had a very difficult uh, seller myself. So I'm going to put in that they need to paint the house, okay? And they've already received a bid. Let's say it's $1,300 to do that. And when I hit add, right now I'm at 440. When I hit add, it subtracts that 1300 from my refined value. So what I would do is just keep adding. Maybe they need to update the uh, guest bathroom, all right, uh, for maybe a cost of $5,000 that they've uh, received, and then click add. So again, it's going to keep subtracting from your original estimate that you have. And then if you don't want to include that, just go ahead and hit remove on either one and that will remove it from your list. I'm going to go ahead and collapse that. And then based on your knowledge of the market, 
Uh, is the market slow, average, or hot in this particular area? So again, you're going to take this little slider and you're going to move it in the direction that you think it should be based on your opinion. And you can see that I have added that again. And again, uh, it shows the adjustment. So if I don't think it's that much, I can always take it down a little bit. Same thing with the exterior. Again, move it to the direction that you think. Maybe it's not as nice as some of the comps that you're going to be using. Maybe the interior is uh, better than maybe some of the comps. So again, this is your opinion and you have full control over what that number is going to be and what this is. Now you don't have to do the refined value. You can skip this totally uh, if, you don't have, if you don't want to and go strictly to your comp analysis. Uh, okay, all these changes, corrections, updates you're making stay in your record of the property. They do not get saved to the national record. Correct. That is correct. So anything that I'm doing here, if you guys would pull up the same property, you're not going to see anything that I have done. It is strictly in your account only. And it's going to stay there until you delete it. All right, good questions. All right, so here I have my estimate. I'm going to go ahead and go over to the uh, comp analysis here. Click on that. There's two ways to do a comp analysis. We're just going to do the first one, which is kind of the quick and easy, out the door type of analysis. This one's a little more involved. There is a video here that you can watch about 90 seconds long, not too long, that talks about it. So if you've got a very uh, unique property or one that um, um, is custom, then you might want to use this one. All right, custom home facts. So I'm going to confirm first. And it's going to show you anything that has an asterisk is a required field. It's going to add in anything that you've added from that other page. I'm just going to click confirm facts and close. Next step is to find the comps. You can add a known property if you know a property that is sold down the street and you want to add that. You can go ahead and put that address in or the MLS listing ID. Anything that's going to be used for your CMA is going to show up in this panel. I'm going to let the computer help me here. It defaults to the type of property it is. So this happens to be a single family. Active for sale, pending, and sold are the default. But if you want to add any of the others, just check the box. You can enter any keywords in. So if this was also waterfront and I want to find other waterfront properties, I might want to add that. But you can add up to six of these. I'm going to go ahead and just clear that out. You can look at properties that are anywhere from the last week to the last 18 months. I'm just going to keep it on six months for right now. Or you can do a date range and go back nine months if you want or even further than that. Here's all your property details. You can go ahead and put in an upper limit if you want or you can just leave it blank. It's up to you. You can also change the living square footage if you want to break it down just a little bit smaller. It's about 20% on either side of your subject property. And then you have these other four that you can also include. If you're backed up to a lot of mountains or a lot of water, uh, make sure that your map is centered where you want. <clears throat> so whatever is on this map is where your comps are coming from. So you may have to move things around if you are situated near a mountain or water. Uh, you can also <clears throat> excuse me, uh, use draw a shape. You can use a custom area. Or you can go ahead and use the geography to also help you find uh, your properties. I'm going to go ahead and hit search. And you can also zoom out too if you need more uh, properties also. All right, so here are my properties here. I can click on any one of these and it will give me information about that property. So you can see here it doesn't have what the sold was, so I may not want to use that but I can go ahead and click on any one of these. If this is one that I want to use, I can check this little box here and you can see how it's just been added over here into my panel. So that's one way that you can look. The other way is on the list. So I've got 20 properties right here that can be used as comps. Anytime you see the star, that is one of the properties that will be used for, uh, that was used uh, in that list on from the summary tab. When I clicked on View Properties, that was one of the ones that was used to generate the RVM. Now you don't have to use it if you want. Just go ahead and place a check mark and you can see that it's been moved over here. So you would just scroll down. You can also click on the address, go in and look at the property, at all the details that I just showed you on this one. Uh, but you would come down here and start clicking on any properties that you would like to use. Again, 
I'm just clicking on some just to choose. I would take obviously a little more time, but as you scroll down here, you can see all of the properties that were used uh, or that could be used. And then down at the bottom here, you'll also have pending, uh, for sale, uh, even further on down, you've got some distressed properties. You may even have off-market properties. So off-market properties go from recently sold to off-market after nine months. So I want you guys to be aware of that. All right, so here I've got some properties here that I want to use. I'm going to go ahead and click Update Valuation and Close. Here is the average of my comps. I can always go back in and edit that. Obviously, I would take a little more time than what I'm doing today. And then come into the Adjust Comps. So here's my property, and then you can put them into whatever order that you want. So if I want this one to be right next to my subject property, then I would come up here to the top and then change that to the first position. So now that's in the first position. Or maybe I change my mind. Maybe I do want this one to be. Uh, so you can put them in whatever order that you'd like, based even on location if you want. Uh, this one is a little bit further out, so I can go ahead and even move that down to the third position. I've got five properties here. Uh, when I hit the next up here, you can see the others. Again, if there's something that I want to remove, maybe I don't want all five, I just maybe want four properties, then I can pick and choose which ones I want or don't want. And all you have to do is just come up here to the top and hit remove. And you can see that that changes your value here. And now I'm down to four properties. You can also select which public record or listing record that you want. If you've already done a CMA on any one of those, you could, you're welcome to use that as well. You can click on the bigger photos and scroll through and look at the photos. Just keep in mind that whatever photo you leave it on is what's going to show up in that report. I'll just go back to the original one here and back to smaller photos. Here it shows your historical listing details on each one. Here, then you're going to compare your subject property to this property. Let's say this one's the same. This one's maybe a little bit better, so I'm going to move that up, and then maybe this one's not quite as nice. So again, it's all your opinion. You decide on which way you want to move that slider, and as you do, you're going to see how it adjusts your subject property. Here's a little map that shows you the distance between the two, and then your side-by-side -side comparison, and then anything else that you've added in there. I like to put in here why I moved the slider to the direction that I did and then just click Update Valuation and Close. Here's the result. I'm going to click on Edit. I don't like to give my clients a number like that. Uh, you could go ahead and put in that you could list the property for 380, or you could come down here and you could give them a range. Let's say we could list it somewhere between 325 to maybe 350. Whoops, let's try that again, 350 and then hit save, and then that's what's going to show up in your report. Last step is to create a report, and it will take you into the report tab. It's going to default to the seller's report. All these will show up here on the left-hand side. They're there for 30 days, and then they start dropping off. Click on more details on any one of those, and it's going to show you all of the elements that are included in this report. So here's everything that's included. You can hover over the little eye and it's going to show you what that page looks like and then you can decide whether you want to include it or not. Anything that you don't want to include, just make sure it's unchecked and then that information will not be included in your report. Down here a little further, you have the market activity. So this is a side-by-side -side comparison of each one of those statuses. And then down here you have where you can limit the sections either to four properties or eight properties. I will just leave it on four. And then if you want just side by side, which is side by side of each of those statuses, or you could do an individual page on each one of those properties, or you can do both the side by side and the individual. So if I'm working with an attorney or an engineer or a doctor, I typically did both and gave them everything. Uh, but for the standard person, I typically just did the side by side. It's a little overwhelming for most of my clients. So I typically stick with just the side by side, but there are times when I also send that depending on my client. All right, then down here, you can include your notes if you want to include that. You can include the seller's proceeds if you fill that out. You can suppress the estimated value or the RVM or AVM. If you don't want that to show up in the report, you can suppress it. 
as well as for the comps. So just check that box if you don't want that to include. And then you can also uh, not include the refined value. So if you don't want them to see what the refined value comes up, if it's quite a bit different than what you think the market bears for that property, uh, you might want to suppress that and not show that information or go back and delete it before you do the report. Then you're going to come down here and personalize it. I typically will check that box and then put in Mr. and Mrs. Seller. And then I type in some kind of a call to action message here. And then you're going to choose the delivery method, whether it's a PDF, download it to your computer. You can send it as an attachment or you can print it off and take it with you. Or you can email it to them with a copy being sent. Click run report. It's going to generate the report here. I'll just go ahead and hit the X here. On the left hand side coming up, you can see that report is being generated. Uh, if you can't wait for a property a report here, so here's one I've already done on this property. I can click on that little orange uh, circle there. Here's where you can come back in and download the report, rerun the report, share it on Facebook. Be careful what you share, however. Uh, delete it. Uh, you will also see when you send out a report, it will show here who you sent it to and when they opened it, uh, the time and the date. All right, so when that report will open up, it's going to ring the doorbell and let you know the report is ready. This is what it would look like. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, address, all of your contact information here. And then it goes into the report. So here's the estimated value, the refined value, the comp analysis. Here's all the home facts. Goes into the extended home facts, interior and exterior details, the schools. Here's how you did the moving of the sliders here and the value that it gave. Here's the home improvements. Here's the needed improvement. Goes into uh, some charts and graphs here, sales history, legal description. Here's the deed records. Here is the sales and financing activity. Here's the market activity. Goes into the charts here. Let me get down to the meat of it here. And then you're getting into your comps. So here's the legend right below, shows where your property is and the comps that you used. Here's the side by side. These are comps that were selected by you. So your subject property and then the four comps that you selected. Side by side comparison. And then it goes into the market activity. Shows on the map where all that market activity is. And then you've got each of the properties here broken down by each of these categories, your uh, ones that you've selected, and the ones that RPR has selected for you. And then here's the ones for active, side by side. And then you've got the pending. And then you've got the recently sold. So whatever status that you, it's, uh, if you heard the doorbell, that just means my report is done. So if you got kids and dogs, they'll be running to the doorbell, to the door. All right, so here's the recommended pricing strategy broken down by these different categories. Your uh, ones that you've selected versus the ones that market activity RPR has selected. Sold comparison, the details of the comparative analysis, as well as the refined value. And then if you've added any notes or pictures, those will show up on this page. Here is your seller's proceeds, which I didn't fill out for that class. <laughs> Sorry. And then there is a, a page that talks about RPR. All right, so that is the report, and this one happens to be about 26 pages long. All right, let's go back. So my report is generated. I can go ahead and download. I'm just going to hit the X there. Uh, you can manage your own custom pages here. You can add up to five custom pages. They do have to be in a PDF format, no lar larger than 10 megabytes. So it could be uh, an introduction letter. It could be testimonials. It could be all about your services. So that's a nice way to also add that too. All right, let's go back home. Let's say we're working with a buyer now. So we've got a client that is moving to Hilo and they're looking for anything that's from, let's say 600 to 800. They're, you know, and you can put in the number of beds and baths or you can leave that open. And then go over to the advanced, because here's where you can add the keywords. So if they're looking for waterfront property, or they're wanting something with a fireplace, or they want to be, you know, in the mountains, you know, whatever is going to show up in the public records uh, 
and your MLS records and the public remarks that the listing agent put in. Those are some of the keywords that you can go ahead and add in. And again, you can add up to six here. Uh, I've unchecked pending. And then I've come down here and I've only checked single family. So typically these are all checked. Uh, let's say I just want single family. So I'm going to uncheck all and then I can just set single family. Or if I'm looking for other residential, uh, that could be uh, timeshares or uh, anything like that that you want to include. You can go ahead and check other. And then come back up here and hit search. And it's going to go out and find all of those properties that meet that criteria. And typically I'd probably put in you know, some keywords to really help refine my search. But I wanted to be able to show you other tools here. So up here at the top, you can draw a shape. So again, you have box, radius, and polygon. So you could click on one of those. Let's say I want the polygon. And again, I could go ahead and just identify the area that I want. And maybe I go up here and then back down. So it's going to give you the area search. And then you can search in that area. You can also edit the area. So if I know I want to include some others, I'm just going to go ahead and edit that area. And then I can take this and drag it up so that I can include other properties here as well. And then just click in that again and then hit finish editing and that will lock it in for you. So then these are the only properties that you're going to be seeing. The other thing that you can do is you can do it by a map pin. So if they're looking to be close to, um, you know, a certain maybe business or maybe the airport in this case, since that's right here on my map uh, and drive time, you click on drive time and it's going to identify, whoops, one thing I forgot to do is hit search in that area and it's going to pull up just those properties that are in that area. And I forgot to do that. So I apologize for that. So let me go ahead and do drive time. You can put in an address here and click search, or you can just go ahead and click on the airport here. You can travel by car or by walking. The time of day that they go to work or to the airport, let's say they go at 9 a.m. on Monday and they want to be only 15 minutes from the airport, click apply, and it's going to show you what properties are available. All right. And you can always click on that again and change the length of time if you want to do that as well. So now I have a, an idea of where my properties are. I'm going to go ahead and hit reset map. So again, draw my shape. Let's go back and hit that polygon here. And we're just going to go back, hit this area here. And we'll go right back up here. And then I'm going to go ahead and search in this area. And you can see how everything else is gone. It's just those properties that are in that area. You can also do it by geographies. So you can do it by school districts. You can do it by neighborhoods. So depending on how far out you're uh, zoomed. So if I zoom in just a little bit here, uh, you'll see now that instead of just having macro, I've got intermediate. Um, but you can uh, zoom out or zoom in and that will make a difference on what you see here. So just click on whatever you want to see and then it will show up uh, the different school districts. You can go ahead and click on that and you can select the school districts in those particular areas. All right. If you decide that you don't want one area, you can just go ahead and uncheck it and then it's going to find it in the others. And then you can go ahead and search in those three areas and then you have those properties identified. All right. So right now we're on the map view here. Uh, another tool that you have over here is gray road, which is what we're on. You also have the aerial. You click on aerial and you can see your outlines here of your uh, geographies that you've selected. You also have overhead. I'm going to go ahead and click on gray. And I'm going to go ahead and just eliminate. Um, oh, okay. Don't want, let me do that. I'm going to click on POIs, points of interest. So if they're looking to be close to a grocery store, click on that and you can see where all the grocery stores are located. If they want to be close to fire or they want to be close to library. So whatever they're interested in being close to, you can go ahead and zoom in then. Let me zoom in a little bit closer and you can see the little basket here. And then as you're clicking on it, it's going to give you information about what that uh, business is. And then that's another way that you can help find 
uh, properties that are within a certain distance of where they need to be. Here's parks. Um, further on down, you've got recreation, arts and entertainment, restaurant and bars, uh, retirement facilities, shopping and services. So any one of these that you can use. Now, what I typically do then is I go ahead and uncheck all of the ones that I have checked and then close it out once I've located my area because it's going to remember what you checked the last time and it will remember and it will populate your screen with those areas. So here I have my five properties. I'm going to go ahead and go over here to list view and you can see my properties. Uh, you have all of your criteria over here on the left hand side. You can make any changes if you get a longer list than that and you want to make any changes. You have that information there. Let's go ahead and click on one here. All right, so here you've got the for sale price, list price here. Here's the RVM. It shows when the list date was, the listing MLS ID. Here's the view details, which shows you the properties that were used to generate that RVM. Here's all the basic facts, the confidence score. And then you've got the pictures that the listing agent put in. So you can scroll through here quickly, look at each one. You can also click on this little blue box and it will go in and you can look at the properties. I'm just clicking the uh, arrow here. Gives you a little bit bigger view here of each pic, uh, picture that the listing agent put in. You can also click on these four boxes right here and it will take you in and show you all of the properties that they, uh, the listing agent put in. I'm going to go ahead and just hit the X here. Here is the information that the listing agent put in. Click on more to see what else they put in. Another place for notes. So again, every time I preview a property, you know, with my office or on my own, I'm adding in notes about what I noticed. So let's say, for instance, um, let's see here, on the second bedroom uh, needs some ceiling work done. Oops. You know, again, these are my notes. I don't want anybody else to see it. So I'm going to uncheck that box to make sure that no one else sees my notes. Again, you've got upload photos, seller's proceeds. Here's the homeowner's information. Here's all the home facts, uh, public versus the listing. Another place for notes. You've got the estimated home value, the price change history. So it started off at $875. It's now down to $795 here. You've got the interior and exterior features and details. Here's the location, including the walkability score. Here's the school information. Here's your home energy consumption. Again, if there's nothing um, available, it will not be there. Here's your legal description, plat map, tax information, deed records, and so on. Coming back up, you've got schools that are within about a five mile radius of this home. And you're welcome to click on any one of those. Information about the neighborhood. Here is the compare historical records that I was talking about. So if it's been listed multiple times, you're going to see every time it's listed, you can just click on the compare historical records and then compare side by side each listing. Uh, you can really find out a lot about a property just by doing that. Uh, and then you can hit the down arrow and go in and look at any of the others as well. I'm going to go ahead and X out of there. Additional information, this is a great place to find out whether it's a fee simple or a leasehold property. You get the private remarks, you get the showing instructions, uh, and then you're also your commission break. So everything is right there. Now, keep in mind that when you're sending out a report, and this is a listed property, none of the listing agent's information is going to be included in that report, only your contact information. Additional information is also not included in that report. So I wanted you guys to be aware of that. This is just strictly for your use and that's why it does collapse. So that if you happen to be sitting at the desk and going through this with a client, they're not going to see that additional information. Here's the listing agent's information. Here's the heat maps. And then again, you can go down to the history, look at the history, uh, the charts, and then you can go in and do a comp analysis on this particular property and to see what kind of price you want to offer uh, to that client. Here is the neighborhood information. You click on the neighborhood information. Gives you a little bit more on the summary tab here. Talk about, about this data. Gives you a definition of source and how often it's updated. 
change over the last month, change over the last 12, hover over, get the data. Scrolling on down, median list price, population of children by age group, adults by age group. Uh, here's the housing tab. This is really great information that if you guys are going to do an open house, come in here and get little nuggets of information. And then as they come through your open house, you could say, did you know that almost 70% of the homeowners in here own their home and only 30% rent? You know, so little tidbits like that sometimes will get them talking because they realize that you know something about this neighborhood. So again, you have all this information here. So we got a lot of housing facts and stats. Then you've got the people tab. Again, this is a lot of good information, even if you wanted to post it on social media. Uh, breaks it down by population, the median age, male, male female ratio, uh, levels of population, uh, education levels, less than ninth grade, ninth through 12th, high school graduates, uh, bachelor's, college education, graduate. Here's population of children by age group. This is all coming from the census. So here's adults, households with children, income brackets. Here's occupational categories, even the presidential voting pattern. Uh, economic talks about the unemployment rate. I'll just kind of skip that and then go back over to the quality of life. And you guys already know that you've got a great place to live. But here's the elevation. Here's the annual rainfall, days of full sun. Some of this information hasn't populated. Uh, maybe eventually it will. Here's the commute time, how do people get to work, average monthly temperature, even the walkability score. And then here are also neighborhoods that are nearby that you can go back in and look at as well. Let me go back to the results here. All right, so let me go ahead and click on uh, this uh, street here or this home. And we're going to go up to the reports. So typically after I'm done showing properties to my clients, I will come in and generate a mini property report. So when I click on the more details, uh, this is everything that is included in that report. Uh, you can see list price, uh, comp analysis, if I had done it, would be in there. Here's home facts. I typically don't include that, but it's up to you on whether you want to include that information. I typically don't um, do the mortgage records also. So again, it's up to you on what you want to include or not. But it remembers what you did the last time and sets it as the default. And then again, you can include or not include. You can also decide how many uh, pages of properties, uh, photos you want. Um, I've got a little time. I'm going to show you how to add the custom pages here. I think we've got some time here. Let me go ahead and show that. So here's where you can manage your custom pages. Again, you can have up to five custom pages. Uh, in your reports. So once you load it into one, it's going to show up in all of them. But all you do is come down to add. It has to be in a PDF format. So I'm going to hit browse for a file. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. Here's my introduction letter and then click open. And it automatically inserts it. So there it is. I'm going to add one more. Let's browse for a file. I'm going to come down here and go to my testimonials and click open. And now, once you have them in here, you can go ahead and view the page. So if you've made several PDF format uh, documents and you want to make sure you uploaded the correct one, just click on the view page and it will show you that page. Uh, if it's not, go ahead and hit that little trash can and get rid of it and reload the next one. You can put them in whatever order that you want just by doing a drag and drop. You can also change. You can see where introduction letter was all run together here. So I can go ahead and make... Uh, any changes. I can put in Joe's intro letter. I can also choose to decide whether I want it at the beginning, which is right after the cover page, or at the end, which is at the end of my report. And then come down here and make sure you hit save. And you can see now how it is entered in. So now when I generate a report, it's going to show up in all of my reports. So whether I click on the seller's report, you can see it's there, or a property report. Now a property report is a really good report also for your clients that if you come down here, it has neighborhood information and it's got school information. So if they're coming from a different island and they don't know about uh, your island, 
then you can maybe send this information and that it makes for a, a nice report as well. Okay. Um, again, and then you would just come down and personalize it, choose the delivery method. Uh, here's the school report. You can go ahead and generate a school report. On this particular property, I can go ahead and select whatever one they want. You can only do one at a time and then uh, generate a report that way. Uh, you can come in and do a neighborhood report right from here. Uh, property flyer. This is a great one to do. Also, if you're going to do an open house on an active property, then you could just put in here open house. Saturday or whenever you guys do it and then you can uh, generate a flyer like that as well So let me go back home. That's a lot of information. I know apologize for that. I Could talk for hours <laughs> Okay, and I'm sure you don't want to hear me do that. You got other things better to do. So let me go back to my PowerPoint here And let's go into setting up your account so when you come into the login page on the desktop, you're going to come down here where it says create an account. Down here, you do have uh, some other things that you can look at. You've got uh, real life stories that are coming from realtors. Here's what is RPR. Here is our um, eBooks that you can go in and look at. The user stories, they do rotate through just a little short, three to five minutes, all about how they're using RPR in their practice. So you're welcome to watch those. Here's a nice little video that you can watch um, at your leisure that talks about what is RPR. Here's the latest uh, ebook. We've got, I think, seven ebooks that you're welcome to go in and take a look at. So please go in and take a look at that. Just download it to your computer and it will walk you through step by step on how to do that topic. So in your account creation, if you haven't already done so, you'll come in here, you'll put in your NRDS last name and your email address that RPR or NAR has on file and then uh, hit next step. If you already have an account, it's going to let you know and then you can return just by signing in here. Uh, if you can't find your credentials, then you can look it up by your NRDS ID just by clicking here where it says look up. Uh, when you click on look up, it's going to take you into the National Association of Realtors website. You'll put in your last name and your email address and hit get NRDS ID. You'll then put in your first name, your last name, your primary email address, enter a password, has to be at least eight characters, and it's going to have a strength meter underneath. It will automatically try to include your um, MLS system, so it will fill it in based on your uh, MLS ID and then you'll see all of that information in there. Uh, if you belong to multiples, it will be in an uh, alphabetic format A to Z. You must accept the terms and conditions there. Uh, once you've done that, you're going to get the good to go uh, message pop up and then you can access your listing data here or you can watch this uh, getting started video which is basically what I just uh, went through today of uh, this class so getting started with RPR if you need to reset your password or you're having problems log in uh, you can come down here where it says forgot password and it will help you uh, log in and get your password in there uh, if you've already got your account if you see this little I next to it, you can click on that and it's going to show you the password that you have typed in. So just in case that you're typing in the wrong one or, you know, sometimes they get so complicated now with our passwords that they got to have uppercase, lowercase, you know, characters, all sorts of stuff. So now we've added this little I where it will show you what you've typed in and then you can always retype it if it is wrong. And then just make sure you come back into the settings here and then you can make sure that you can uh, make any changes that you need to to your account. All right, so if, once you have your account set up, then download the mobile to your uh, tablet or your phone. Uh, everything that I've shown you today is going to be on these two devices, little different format. We do have webinars on both of these. I can't leave home showing properties without my tablet or my phone. It's just so much easier. Any question that the clients have, I can pull up that device and get in any questions they ask answered right then and there. Or even as I'm driving by a property that 
maybe just came on the market and they want to know why it didn't show up. Uh, maybe it's, you know, higher price than what they want or it ha doesn't have enough bedrooms that they want. So uh, you have those devices. You're going to absolutely love them. So on your mobile devices, you can search for any property on or off the market. Uh, you can view market conditions right from your home screen. You can create and send uh, branded reports. You can store and manage all of your saved properties. You can even take photos, voice, and text notes as you're going through the properties. There's a one-touch call to the listing agent. And all of these devices sync together. Your desktop, your laptop, your cell phone, uh, your tablet all sync together. Uh, for class materials, if you want to go to class, info at NARRPR.com. We'll send you some links to some class uh, materials. Just put in the title, the name of the class, Getting Started with RPR. You can access RPR at www.narrpr.com or through your MLS. Uh, download RPR Mobile from your App Store for the iPhone or Google Play for the Android. Our blog is where all of our uh, information is, so go to blog.nerrpr.com or down at the bottom of your desktop. Click on the blog down there. That's probably the quickest way to get there. We have live training in your area possibly with some contract trainers. Here's where you can sign up for other webinars. They're all based in central time zone, so you would have to uh, make that change from Hawaii time to a central time. And then we also have video tutorials in there, information about commercial and broker tool sets, our co customer support, again, is there 24-7. And then our support links are at the bottom of every page. Again, if you want to look at all of our reports, just type in RPR agent to 555-888. Please don't allow the device to put in a space there. It does like to put a space in there, so make sure that those two are together, and then you'll be able to get that information back. All right, let me go in and see what other questions I have here. I belong to two boards. Okay, so when, yeah, let me go back. So we're getting the question about primary. So let me go back here. So when you're up here under the uh, settings and profile, you're going to see all of your um, information. I only belong to RPR or, you know, so I work for RPR. So you're not going to see that, but you're going to see all of your MLS information in here. And then you're going to take the radial button and make sure that the primary is on the uh, MLS that you want the information on. So if you belong to two boards or more, just come back into these settings and make sure that the blue radial is on the board that you want to see. And then you'll see all of the information on all the properties for that particular MLS. And then if you need to see it for the other one, just come back in here and change that radial back to the other one. Um, so hopefully that helps. If you have problems, just call our help desk and they'll be able to help you with that as well. All right, let's see. Jonathan, did I get your uh, information? Hopefully, um, yeah, what I would do is call the help desk and they're going to be able to help you with that. Um, They'll get you up running quicker than, than I can at this point. All right, so let's see here. Ah, all right, great. I'm glad you got that taken care of. All right, if there's any other questions, please let me know. I'm hoping that I was able to answer all of your questions and that you learned a lot in this last hour. I know we're a little over time, but I wanted to make sure that I got everything covered for you. So if there's, I'll stick around here for a few more minutes, see if there's any other questions. Uh, yes, I am recording this and you will be receiving a link to the recorded version uh, uh, within probably the next 24 to 48 hours you will be receiving that. If not, just contact us and we'll make sure we get a copy to you. All right, I think I've got everything covered. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. You're welcome, uh, Karina. I'm glad you got the information there that you needed. Thank you. All right, guys, you have a wonderful rest of the week, and I hope to see you again on another webinar uh, for Hawaii. Aloha.